Hey everyone, Mike here with Prehistoric Magazine. Now, welcome back to another video. Now, if you're watching this, appreciate all the support. Would help us out tremendously if you haven't subscribed to subscribe to this channel. We're currently not monetized, and that's been my goal for quite some time to get this channel monetized to pay for paleo artwork for both Prehistoric Magazine as well as the artwork on this channel. So, love to have you subscribe if you are, haven't done so already. Now, to the topic of this video. For any amount of time, if you've watched this channel, you may know that I love giant sauropods and I love giant theropods. The bigger, the better. Now, that may be a little bit discriminatory towards smaller dinosaurs. I still love them, but I've always loved bigger is better. And today we're talking about big theropod dinosaurs, big predatory dinosaurs. Now, Meraxes gigas and Mapusaurus rose are basically new animals that have been discovered and announced within the last 10 years. So I consider them kind of a new breed of theropod dinosaurs. And I've wanted to make this video for quite some time. It's kind of a fascinating topic. You know, don't get me wrong. I love talking about T-Rex. And over the years, I've come to appreciate the animal so much more than I ever did in my life. But I love talking about unknown theropod dinosaurs. And you know, in paleontology circles, these animals aren't unknown. But to the outside public, these two names are completely foreign. If you said these two names to the average person on the street, they would have no clue what you're talking about. And it would honestly be a guess whether this was a plant eater or this was a meat eater. But if you're watching this video, we know that these are meat eaters, some big animals, Meraxes gigas and Mapusaurus. Now, it appears that these animals live together. And that alone raises my alarm for, this is a fascinating topic. This is kind of a really fascinating thing to think about and envision. And I hope to write future articles in Prehistoric Magazine about this very topic. But nonetheless, these two giant apex predators appear to have lived together. Patagonia, Argentina, late Cretaceous, about 94 million years ago. And if you are in paleontology and you've been reading about this stuff for decades, you may know of something called Ernst Stromer, who was a German paleontologist who first uncovered the remains of Spinosaurus. Now, he had something that he referred to as Stromer's Riddle. And that basically was that in the Baja Rio formation, where he was looking for dinosaur fossils, he found an unusual amount of theropod dinosaurs, and it became known as Stromer's Riddle. How could all these large predatory dinosaurs be coexisting together? And he came up with the idea that they must be exploiting different food niches, different food resources. So that's kind of the topic. That's kind of the question. I'll be looking to you at the end of this video to give your input and insight. Do we think that Mapusaurus and Meraxes gigas, if they did in fact coexist together, were they exploiting different food niches, different food resources? Or was there simply enough food in that formation to support both of them. Now, obviously there were other theropod dinosaurs, maybe not as large and massive as those two, but there were other theropods running around that formation as well. Also something of interest is the fact that it looks like Argentinosaurus also coexisted with them. So if this turns out to be true, Mapusaurus, Meraxes gigas, and Argentinosaurus, I mean, how can that not be a fascinating topic to have one of the largest plant eaters, one of the largest animals ever to walk the earth, living in and amongst two very large theropod dinosaurs. Now, these animals weren't the biggest predatory dinosaurs, but they were big. And we know that Meraxes gigas is only known from one individual, so almost impossible to think that that was the biggest animal ever found from that species. So I believe that that animal probably could get much larger. And, you know, if we're looking at size estimates back and forth, it looks like Mapusaurus has the size advantage. It was the bigger of the two animals. But who knows? Maybe as more time goes by and we find more fossils, Meraxes gigas will overtake it. But as it stands right now, looks like Mapusaurus was around 36 to 39 feet, maybe 12 feet in height, and maybe 6 to 7 tons in weight. Meraxes gigas, about 33 to 36 feet. The head was about 4.2 feet long, and maybe it weighed around 9,000 pounds, four and a half tons. So again, these are estimates, very difficult to estimate the weight of extinct animals. Also very difficult to come up with how big animals were when we simply have one or even just a dozen. That's not a lot to give us a sample size for how big they may have grown. But nonetheless, I believe that this situation, this scenario is another example of Stromer's riddle. 
which is how did these two animals, these two big predatory dinosaurs, two big apex predators, how did they coexist together? Now, obviously I mentioned Egypt 94 million years ago, Spinosaurus, Carcharodontosaurus, Bahariosaurus, Deltadromius, all these big animals running around. They form what's known as Stromer's Riddle. I believe there's also other examples of Stromer's Riddle, you know, the Morrison Formation, Torvosaurus, Ceratosaurus, Allosaurus, all these animals, these big predatory dinosaurs existing. And I believe with this formation, we have another example of Stromer's Riddle. Now, if you think about Argentinosaurus existing in this formation, I don't really think either of these animals could touch that big animal. Who knows, though? We'll never know. But personally, I don't think they could have. The animal is just too big. But the young of Argentinosaurus probably would have been about elephant-sized. And that seems to be where these animals may have made their living. Now, in asking around and doing a bit of research for this, you know, a lot of people th seem to think that both of these animals would have hunted ornithopods, sauropods, and possibly other theropod dinosaurs. You know, they may have either killed other theropod dinosaurs or scavenged. You know, the main thing when I ask around and do research for these videos is that these are apex predators. They probably didn't specialize on one particular thing. Sometimes I think we like to come up with they were just hunting that. And I don't necessarily think life is that simple. You know, we know apex predators from today. They get a free meal. They'll take the free meal. If they're hungry and they need to do a hunt, then they'll hunt. Whatever it takes to survive, whatever it takes to eat the necessary amount of meat to continue on and to not only allow themselves to grow, but thrive and feed their families. So I believe these two animals would have eaten whatever they damn well wanted. You know, um, I also think that they would have hunted sauropods. You know, Argentinosaurus, the young of Argentinosaurus, probably would have been about elephant size. Seems like that would have been a good target if you were a pack of Mapusaurs or you were a pack of Meraxes gigas. Now, the question I have for you all is, what do we think? Do we think that they were exploiting different food niches, meaning Mapusaurus was hunting something different? and Meraxes gigas was also hunting something different. Do we think that they were exploiting different food niches if they in fact lived together? Or do we think that there was just simply enough food to where they could have hunted the same, to where possibly both of them may have been hunting young Argentinosaurs on occasion? So that's really my question to you. I appreciate all the support in this. This is another one of those fascinating topics that I've thought about for quite some time. It's one of the reasons why I published Prehistoric Magazine. It's why I enjoy doing this, you know, asking questions that don't necessarily have easy answers, but asking questions that are not necessarily a general topic that the general public would discuss. These are heavy paleontology questions, you know, not necessarily too academically oriented, but they're questions that the average person wouldn't be asking. And also, that's why your um, responses are so important. There's not necessarily an easy answer. So I really look to you. Chime in with your thoughts. Do you think that both of these animals were exploiting different food niches, or do you think there was enough in that formation to where they could have specialized on hunting the exact same animal? Thanks for the support. See you in the next video. Take care.